Okay. <clears throat> Um, Aloha, I just want to give a friendly reminder on behalf of the HK West Maui Community Fund Board um, that the musical albums Le Nahono Pi'ilani, Songs of West Maui, and Le Nahono Pi'ilani Na Mele Ho, um, a benefit for Na Leo Kalele, um, and featuring Mele old and new of and about West Maui, are available at mele.com and also digitally. Um, the songbook of the same name and also a benefit for Naleo Kalele is also available from Kamehameha Publishing. So uh, I hope you'll uh, support uh, the West Maui Immersion community by um, listening to the music and or purchasing the book. Aloha. Aloha, Velina uh, Maikako. Mahalo everyone for joining us this evening. Um, since 2018, the Naikaneo Maui Cultural Center has been hosting um, the free public HK West Maui Community Fund Kanaka Scholar Series Lecture Series. Um, this series is a co-sponsored by HK West Maui Community Fund, uh, the University of Hawaii Maui College, um, Hawaiian Studies Department, and the Kue, Hui, uh, Kue Petition Hui. Uh, the lectures occur monthly. The series features a host of new and established scholars, uh, innovators, and their research and their work on Hawaii and Hawaiian communities. Uh, we proudly present this to you via Zoom and live through HK West Maui's Facebook page. Tonight's presentation is from, um, we have Kule Higashi Kanahele coming in to us. Hi, Kule. Um, <clears throat> she has been working. Sorry, guys. Oh, what happened? Um, working at the UH Hilo. Um, She's on her way to get her PhD. Yeah. Um, and then also working with the Ilkan uh, Kanaka Ole um, Foundation as well. Um, virtual round of applause for Kule. Allah. <laughs> okay, do I start? Yes. <laughs> what? Sorry. <laughs> okay. Hi, everybody. Um, I'm still getting used to this webinar format where I don't get to see every single one of you joining in. I can just see my own face. And so it's kind of like I'm talking to myself. And I want to I wanna intro by saying um, I'm Zooming from home. And so I'm sorry if you hear my kids screaming in the background throughout this presentation. Um, and, and to add on to the introduction that Kanani just gave, um, for those of you that don't know me, I was really excited when um, I was invited to speak at this West Maui Scholar Series because my family is from West Maui. My grandma um, was a Lamlang. She was born in Kahawiki in Honolulu, And her parents and her grandparents are also from the Honokohao, Honolulu, Kahakuloa areas. And so, um, it's always nice to be able to go home. And even though going home in these days means a virtual go home. And so I'm excited to be here and um, on the Zoom and talk to you guys. Um, I decided that I wanted to talk about Kanawai, uh, Kanawai Pele, because it's one of the topics of my dissertation. And um, hopefully I can get this EK out far and wide for everyone to, uh, digest. So let's see, can I share my screen? I need to, um, my share screen is disabled. I have a um, presentation to share and we'll get that right up. Let me, let me fix that, sorry. Okay, so let's pull that up. Where is it? Uh oh. Let's see. And of course, this is a brand new laptop, and now it's asking me to change all my privacy settings. And so I'm sorry for that. I didn't realize. Talk among yourselves. <laughs> if you need, maybe you could send it to me and we could start that way. I could just advance Can you slides. share now? Can you try again and see if it works now? 
No. Oh, okay, maybe. Can you guys see it? Yes. Perfect. So let me go to present mode. Okay. Is it good? Yep. Okay, perfect. So, Kanawai Pele. And let's see. And so, um, to begin, my background in research is with Papaku Makavalu, and that's with the Edith Kanaka Ole Foundation in Keokaha, Hilo. And Papaku Makavalu is a, is a methodology or a framework that was developed, developed by uh, Polani Kanaka Ole Kanahele. And Papaku Makavalu stems from her 40, 50 year research into the Kumulipo. And the Kumulipo, um, as we all know, details the birth of everything from coral polyps all the way up to Ali'i. And in this progression of detailing the births of all of these organisms, um, there's a section devoted to Haumea. And, and Haumea begins this Ali'i section where classism emerges. And in, um, when the class system emerges, Haumea recognizes three levels of kahuna, and she calls these kahuna uh, papahuli honua, papahuli lani, and papahana moku. And basically, when uh, Dr. Kanako Olikanahele saw these three titles, these three levels of kahuna in the Kumulipo, it got her thinking that our entire Hawaiian universe can be viewed within these three papa, within these three classes of kahuna. So you have papa huli lani, those are the kahuna that study the lani. And lani is considered everything above our head to the atmosphere. And then we have papa huli honua, and those are the kahuna that studies everything um, of the earth and all of its cyclical processes. Um, and then papa hanomoku dealing with the birth. And it could be birth of man, birth of marine animals, birth of flora, birth of fauna, et cetera. And so um, that's Papaku Makavalu basically is understanding the cycles of Papahuli Honua, Papahuli Lani, and Papahana Moku and how they interact and interplay with each other. And so my, my focus is Papahuli Honua. And for Papahuli Honua, what I do is um, the majority of my research has to do with Pele. And so that's why my presentation to you is on the Kanavai of Pele, um, which I think is very um, apt in these days, especially since uh, the Pahoa flow, uh, the Kiahialaka or Leilani Estates flow that we had a few years ago, and now with the um, crater with Hale Maumau erupting today. And so I begin with um, explaining what my title is, Kanavai Pele. Uh, this is taken straight from the Pukui Dictionary. We know Kanavai is a law and all of these uh, entries that go with Kanavai. But what I wanted to highlight was um, that Arakua had Kanavai too. And so this word Kanavai is not a new concept that came with um, missionary influence. It's a concept that dates um, in Hawaii for hundreds of years. And um, for example, the Kanawai Ku here, we can see that um, the Kanawai of Ku was that no one might lean backwards during ceremonies. And this is an embodiment of his name because Ku means to be erect, right? And so we wanna embody that element, that energy during ceremonies. Um, we have other Kanawai of different Akua in our environment that keeps us safe. Um, one example, maybe growing up in Hawaii that you didn't realize possibly was a kanavai was don't turn your back to the ocean, right? That's a kind of common sense rule that keeps us as kanaka safe while we're at the beach. Um, another kanavai, a local kanavai that I know of in Hilo that my neighbor in Panaewa told me is that um, it could be called kanavai mo'o or kanavai poli'ahu maybe that it's passed down in her family that whenever there was snow on Mauna Kea, it was unsafe to swim in rivers because that's when the mo'o would be active. And when you think about it, scientifically, 
that makes sense because when there's snow on the mountain, the runoffs of the rivers are higher. And so if you go swimming in the rivers during that time, um, you'll likely be eaten by mo'o. And so all of these kanawayakua are meant to keep us as kanaka safe. And let me, let me bring up, I mentioned the word akua. Akua is translated commonly as God. For Papuku Makavalu, we like to translate the word akua as an element. And that is because um, when we think of akua, we see the akua as all the different elements in our environment. Sorry, I have to point my son away. Um, so like Pele is the lava. That's why she's in Akua. The sun, Kane Hualani, is the sun. It's that, that element of heat in the sky. That's why he's in Akua. Kane and Kanaloa as water, that's why they're Akua. And so when you start to see the Akua in our environment as the actual elements, it changes your whole relationship with them and the whole dynamic you have with them. Um, instead of saying Pele is the goddess of the volcano, that kind of gives you a different imagery than saying Pele is the lava. And so that relationship that Papa Kumakavalu teaches us to have with our environment, to have with our akua, is, um, is a different relationship than the ones I grew up with, um, thinking that Pele was the goddess of the volcano. She's not... Um, She's not this mythical human figure smoking a cigarette, hitchhiking a ride, um, stopping you from taking pork over the pali, for example. Pele is the lava. And so these kanavai, back to kanavai, protects us um, and, and, and informs us how do we deal with our environment and the different elements and energies in our environment. Okay, let me... Go to the next slide. And, um, and so this is an example um, of how we can use Kanavai. This picture is an example of how we can use Kanavai to inform us how to, how to behave in the environment and what, what is the right things we should do and what is the right things we shouldn't do. And to illustrate this talk, I wanted to share this chant which I would say a majority of us right now would be familiar with because of our recent stands up at Pu'uhulu Hulu on Mauna Kea. A lot of us were able to, um, a lot of us were able to participate in the aha or the ceremonies up there. And this is one of the chants that we use to close the aha. And so let's see if this will play for you guys. Just as a refresher because we used to do this three or more times a day and it's been a while since we were able to 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 watch this and perform this <laughs> version um, that most of us is ma'atu because of the aha up at um, the alakupuna. But actually, what is great about this short little chant is that it is found in most of the pele chants that we call hulihia chants. And hulihia chants, for those of you who may not be familiar with pele chants, hulihia chants are those chants that describe um, land altering, landscape altering eruptions. So these are our big catastrophic eruptions like that of at uh, Kiahialaka a few years ago, Leilani Estates. 
and um, it changes the landscape and both physically, mentally, and spiritually. And, and so when we have huli here, when we have these great upheavals, we use, we tack on this kanavai pele, this kukulu kapahu pauku onto those huli here to give a kind of closure. Um, but not all of them are the same. This is, I shared this with you because this is the version most of us is ma'atu. But to talk about kanavai pele, I prefer this version, which is slightly different. It has the same manao, um, just given in a different order. And so this version goes, o kukulu kapahu kapu akaleo, he ho'okiki kanavai, he kua'a kanavai, he kai okia kanavai, he alamuku no kane, the kanaloa, he kiho iho i kanavai no pele no ko uakua lae. And so, um, for the remainder of this presentation, we'll go and makavalu or deconstruct these lines, um, these lyrics line by line. And so the first line, o kukulu kapahu kapu akaleo, uh, literally, um, o is an imperative or it's a type of command. And the command is that we are going to kukulu kapahu kapu akaleo. We're going to um, establish or erect these boundaries um, by command, by the voice. And what's interesting about Hulihia chants, about these landscape altering um, eruptions is that Pele has a boundary and that's one of the Kanavai Pele. She doesn't, she's not gonna erupt any old place. There's rules where she, where the, where this element, where this Akua has to flow. And it's, and it's built within these, it's kukulu within these established boundaries. And what is those boundaries, might you ask? It says here, um, if we skip a couple lines down, the boundaries are set um, here. Healamuku no kane me kanaloa. And this is this alludes to the migration of Pele from west to east. And um, in order to understand this a little bit better, um, you have to know a little bit about Papa Hulilani. And Papa Hulilani tells us that the the year is divided into two um, based on the sun's movement. So half the year is dedicated to Kane and half the year is dedicated to Kanaloa. And so can you guess which half is Kane and which half is Kanaloa? So we have the summer months, um, uh, the dry months to Kane and the winter months is dedicated to Kanaloa. And the we use the um, we use the equinoxes to tell us which half of the year we're in. And so from the equinox to the winter solstice, we're in the time of Kanaloa. So all the way from the, um, the let's see, the equinox goes to the winter solstice back to the equinox, we're in the time of Kanaloa. And then from that equinox to the summer solstice, back to the, the equinox, we're in the time of Kane. And so, so, so with that understanding of the sun and its movement, and then we think that we know that in chants, Pele is referred to both as, um, in Mo'oku Ahau especially, Pele is referred to as the daughter of Kane Hualani. And we can understand this because Kane Hualani is the sun. And um, our ancestors looked at um, Pele as a miniature sun on earth. She's that heat source we can find in the earth. Um, a different mo'oku aha will tell us that he keiki ehu kama ehu o kanaloa. Pele is a child of kanaloa. And we can see this, um, especially with the new island that is emerging. We call that island kama ehu. Uh, so Western scientists call that island lo'ihi, but we don't like that name because um, that name is not traditional. It's just plucked out of the dictionary because the island looked long. And so we can see that Kama'ehu will be that Keiki Ehua Kanaloa that's rising out of the ocean. And so the boundaries here is dictated both by the migratory patterns of Pele as well as the sun. And I should have put a picture of the archipelago so you can see if we start at the top with uh, Kauai Ni'ihauma and we travel down to Hawaii Island, the path of the migration that Pele is taking is following um, Kanehualani. She's following 
um, Pele is following Kane's footsteps. And so that migration of the lava is always traveling um, in that Eastern direction, okay? And we know the sun rises in the East. And so that is what Pele keeps following in her migration. Okay, did I lose anybody? I can't tell because I can't see your faces. But if you have a question, I think there might be a question and answer for them after. Just remember your questions. Okay, so moving on to the next slide. The first kanavai we see here of Pele is ho'okiki kanavai. Ho'okiki means to flow and um, to cause to flow, to erupt. And so this kanavai tells us the function of the Pele is to flow. There is nothing we can do to stop it. It's the reason we have Pele is to create land. A lot of people, especially the media, they like to dramatize things and say, Pele is destructive and she's destroying land and she's destroying communities. And um, however, we as Hawaiians know that Pele is not about destruction. Pele is about creation and it's this eruption and it's this constant migration of the Pele that allows us to have living islands. Um, what, I just thought of something in my head. I've been working with um, um, Hawaii Volcano, for Hawaii Volcanoes National Park and the Hawaii Volcanic Observatories. And um, it's funny that whenever there's a new eruption, they'll always get emails or requests on how to divert the lava, how to bomb the, bomb the crater and so we can stop eruptions, how to divert lava. Um, but this law reminds us that it's not our job as Kanaka to do that. We can't stop the function of the Akua. The Akua needs to ho'okiki kanavai. Which brings us to the next kanavai, he kua'a kanavai. Kua'a literally is the burning back. And this kanavai was applied to our ali'i in that um, you couldn't approach an ali'i from behind. You couldn't take ali'i by surprise, right? You always had to humbly approach ali'i from the front. And same here with this kanavai akua. Kua'a, if we look at the word kua, kua has many prefixes in land terms. Kua hivi, kua lono, kua aina. Um, and so whenever any of these kua, kua hivi, kua lono, et cetera, is a, that land um, is a land that's part of the ho'okiki kanavai, part of this boundary of Pele. So whenever the land is a, it belongs to Pele. Um, and it can be a literal a, it can be literally ablaze with lava, with eruptions, but it can also be more subtle. It can be um, when you're in the volcano area of Hawaii Island, you can smell the sulfur. You can hear the rumbling underground sometimes. You can feel the earthquakes. And that is indicative of an aina that's kua'a. And kua'a closely ties into kai'okia kanavai. Kai'okia literally is an ocean separating law. And, and the reason it's tied to kua'a because any land that is kua'a, that, that, that has a presence of pele on that land, that land should be kai'okia. That land should be, we say nowadays kapu, right? Um, I kapu this house, I kapu the front seat of the truck, I kapu this, I kapu that. Um, this is traditional terminology found in our chants, kai'okia. It's set aside for a particular use for a particular person. Let's see what my next slide is. I think I can. So this slide, um, we see this, we see this verbiage in our ka'au. When Pele goes to Kauai in her dream state to, to hook up with Lohiau, and she comes back and she she wants to fetch Lohiau, right? She wants to bring him home. So she tells Iaka to go get her. I'm some of us, most of us are familiar with that story. But what Pele tells Hiiaka is that I'm going to place a kai o kia, kind of like kai o kia on this man. This man is mine, right? So the words is, um, I wrote it down. Walaa oi nau. Oh, this is what Pele tells Lohiao, excuse me. Walaa oi nau. Walaa oi nau. Ke kauneao iku u kana vai malunao. Ke kana vai kai o kia. So she tells Lohiao, you are mine. I'm placing my kapu on you, my kanavai kai o kia. Um, 
nobody can have you basically the, the thread of that is nobody can have you till I empower you. Usually it's three days. Um, she places this kind of like on her favorite surf spots. Um, one day when Pele and, with, and her sisters were up at the crater, she wants to go surfing. She wants to eat fish. She wants to go holo holo, right? So she tells her sister, let's go down, down uh, Makai Tupuna. We're going to go holo holo. We're going to go surf. But the ocean is Kai Okia. I'm placing my Kanawai Kai Okia on the ocean. Um, I'm the one that gets to surf first. When I pow, you guys can surf. And so taking that language from the text and applying it to the, this chant, the lyrics of this chant, uh, we can see that Pele's kuleana is to ho'okiki. Wherever she ho'okikis within this established pahukapu um, is kua'a. And when that, those areas that are kua'a have this kanavai kai'okia on it, meaning that as long as Pele's presence is there, that land is set aside for her, right? And, and the text tells us it's usually a matter of days or weeks. And when she's pao, she'll move on, which is what we can see in the migration of Pele. When she's pao at Kauai, she moved to Oahu. Pao at Oahu, she moved to Lanai, Maui Ma. Pao at Maui, she's here on Hawaii Island. Pretty soon she's gonna be pao, she'll move on to Kamaehu. Um, and once she moves on, it brings us to this last kanawai, he ki hoi hoi kanawai, ki hoi hoi, is that law of restoration that brings us to hi'iaka. And we all know the, the function of hi'iaka is to reforest, revegetate the lands and bring it ho'i ho'i it back to its fertile verdant state. And so this, these kanavai, these four kanavai pele give us the cycle of a volcano. Um, let's, let's end the chant before I go on. No pele no ko'ua ko'ala e. And these kanavai is for Pele, for my God, for my element, for this energy of the earth. And so what can these kanavai teach us about living on volcanic islands? Well, first of all, um, the most importantly is don't build where there's Pele, right? And you would think that is the most common sense of most common sense, but no. Unfortunately, it's not because we've seen that we know that Kiahialaka, Leilani Estates, was built in volcanic hazard lava zone one. Um, that tells you that the land is still active, but people still built there. Why? Because they sold the land for cheap. And when the lava did flow, when the lava did erupt there, everybody's so shocked. Oh my gosh, what do they want to do? Call Pele um, a destructive force because she's destroying this community. Well, no, if we listen to the Kanavai Pele, we wouldn't have built there in the first place because the active, that land is still active. We still feel the earthquakes. We still smell the sulfur. Um, even if you go there now, we took a drive by um, during this pandemic. You can actually see little pu'u, little cones um, built up in people's yards. The cones is still steaming and people are washing their cars not 10 feet away. And so, People in our modern times need to listen to these kanawai akua, not only the kanawai pele, which tells us where not to build, uh, where not to um, build communities and visit and stuff. Um, but I just lost my train of thought. Oh my gosh, I was looking at my son. I'm sorry. So it tells us not only um, not, we need to learn about these kanawai and the kanawai of all our akua around us to live safely in our environment. Like that kanawai mo'o I told you about the rivers um, and don't go swimming in the rivers when there's snow on the mountains, right? Because that's when the mo'o are active and that's when the water is especially active and it's dangerous to go swimming in rivers. Um, there's other kanawai of in the forest that for different akua that tells us don't do this, don't be louder than the forest, don't trample the underbrush and et cetera. And if we, we we as a society, we as a people um, lobby the government and, and force the government somehow to follow these laws, our environment would be in a much better place. Um, I worked with Lance and Bianca and Shelly with these Kanawai for Mauna Kea. And if we, and if we um, applied all of the Kanawai Akua, 
the TMT and all of those observatories wouldn't have been built. Um, and so to recap, in this case, the Akua will flow, right? And it can be applied to different Akua. The Akua are active in Hawaii Island. A lot of us, are, a lot of us say that we're losing our culture, we're losing our beliefs. You know, a lot of us have, we grew up um, with Christian beliefs. But one of the funniest things that my dear friend, Mehana Okala Hind says, for those that um, have a little bit of hooky hooky, um, because you, 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 you're raised Christian, is that Papa Kumakavalu takes the boogeyman out of Akua. Um, you don't have to be scared of learning about Akua and Kanawai Akua because all we're doing is recognizing the elements that surround us, right? We're not, um, if you're not performing the chants, if you're not performing the ceremonies, um, all you have to understand is that we're recognizing the life-giving elements that are around us. Um, that's one level of it. And so if we recognize these akua, we can learn to be safer and more sustainable in our aina. Um, he kua kanavai, he kai o kia kanavai. Sometimes we don't belong in places. Um, you know, in uh, America as a country, we believe, we, America teaches its citizens to believe we, we have the right to be anywhere. We have the right to drive down to YPO because we can. We have the right to, for example, be in the capital um, because they feel that their, their rights as a citizen should be protected. Um, but we don't have the right to be anywhere at any time. We have to observe these, these kanavai and be at the right place at the right time, right? Because again, um, for our safety as kanaka. And then the cycle will move on. So eventually, maybe in the future, maybe not in your lifetime, maybe your grandchildren's lifetime, but eventually it's going to and then you can venture to these places. Okay. And so what can this, these kanavai teach us is know your place, know your environment, and um, just, just kilo, be aware of everything around you. Um, and don't be afraid of our Akua. Uh, go out, research, learn your chants, learn your ka'au, and um, your mind will, like, like for me, my mind was blown open. And so that's all I have for Kanawai Akua. Do you guys have any questions? Thank you so much for that, Ule. That was fascinating. Um, we do have a couple of questions, um, and Lance, if you have um, have any, please please jump in. Um, one of them is like, can you comment on cultural appropriation, if that's what you would call it, of practices of honoring Pele? They um, like thinking about like videos of chants and ceremonies, and I um, mean even things like Kim Kardashian's Pele's curse eyeshadow and such things. I guess you have a comment. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> oh, Pele's curse eyeshadow, huh? Um, I just think people take it, it. It all stems from tourism, right? I guess, and commercialization of of what Pele's pretty popular because she's so active, so yet in our environment, and so people want to just take it and appropriate it. Uh, I, I don't know what to say about that. That's politically correct for me to say on a Zoom live, <laughs> Facebook live. Um, um, you can say whatever makes sense. Yeah. I don't know who I'm talking to out there. That's why. Oh, well, um, now for this one, um, this would be speaking to Lance Collins. Have you looked into the Anglo-American common law principle of customary law um, and if so, to what extent Kanavai Pele can be incorporated through this common law principle? And maybe Lance I have comment. A plan. 
But let's talk story. I'd love to put that angle in my talk. Yeah, I know he has a lot to say about that. Maybe not here. He probably doesn't want to take up your time. Um, all right, let me go back to the questions. Um, so this is from Leahi Hall. What is the elemental connection between Mohiao and Pele and Hiiaka? Oh, cool. And so, oh, that's so cool. Okay, I'm going to get excited. Okay, so Lohiao, a few years ago, Antipua was super irritated at the fact that Pele was attracted to Lohiao. And in our modern understanding of Lohiao, Lohiao was just a boy toy, right? This handsome boy from Kauai. And Antipua was just so irritated that for why? You know, she could, Pele could be attracted to any of our Akua, why Lohi El? And so Lohi El to her couldn't have just been this handsome boy toy from Kauai. And so we had to research, 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 look to our chants, which is our number one um, source for Papa Kumakavalu. Um, we look to the chants because the chants to us is the original material. And the chants were passed down for centuries and centuries at a time before written language, a time before we could do computers. And so there's so much information embedded in chants. We just have to, um, what Papa Kumakovalu does is help us to decode that and take, take out all of that information. And um, the secondary sources is the Mo'olelos. You heard me referring um, back to the Mo'olelos. But the interesting thing is Mo'olelos what Mo'olelo and Ka'au are is a way for us to understand the chants, right? Because um, writers, the newspaper writers in the late 1800s, early 1900s, what they did was they took those chants that were passed down to them and wove stories around it to make sense of the chants. And so the Mo'olelo is um, from the time period of the mid 1800s to the early 1900s. The chants are from a time period before that. And so, so Auntie made us, Auntie Pua made us go look through all the chants for everything you could find out about Lohio. And um, I'm not sure how familiar you are with the Pele saga, a Ka'au, um, but there is this enormous wind chant of Kauai. And in those chants, you find a lot of information about Lohi O. And um, many of the lines say, Lohi O Kamakani O Ha Ena, um, Lohi O Ipo Kamakani He Enalu O Ha Ena, so on and so forth. And so from that, um, and then in another chat, Kane Hualani, E Kane Hualani, E Kane Hualani, E Aloha Kawa Kaukaho Kuho Okahi Hele Kiala Loa, Aloha Kamakuku Kapakava Hine. And so piecing together all of these chants, we've come to understand that Lohiau is a wind. And what the wind does um, is like Lono Makua, which is a whole nother thing. What the wind does is um, it ignites the fire, right? Because we know from a from a practical standpoint for fire, we need oxygen. And so to light a big fire, like the volcano, a lot of, a lot of Pele stories has all of these akua that have to do with wind. And so what the lohi au does, that wind, and the wind also transports sense, it transports memories. And so we can use all of that connotation of wind um, to say that's what attracted Pele to go back to Kauai and um, what is the word? Rejuvenate, uh, rejuvenate a dormant volcano. And so when, when Pele goes back from Hawaii Island back to Kauai, back to Kauai, what, what's happening is a dormant volcano is rejuvenated again. And then Kiyaka has to go back um, to Kihoihoi to revive and restore and revegetate the land that Pele went. So that's the kind of connection. That's the short five minute explanation of that dynamic between Lohiao, Pele, and Hiiaka. Okay. 
fun, yeah. So when you so when you go back and read, um, go back and read the Ka'au from the beginning, but think about all of these characters in the Ka'au as elements, you'll see like this whole other scientific um scientific um environmental layer open and it'll blow your mind. Like the things our ancestors recorded were amazing. Thank you for that. That's yeah. <laughs> all up so much to take in. Um, so one more question. Uh, maybe well, we have, we have time for more. In the Pele epic in the newspapers, um, I assume the Hawaiian newspapers, there appears to be a rule regarding hospitality towards Pele. Was this a kanavai? Was it specific towards Pele or more generally towards strangers, like any kind? You know, I'm not sure. I, it's like you. I think you're referring to like the little snippets, like the 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 bread food ulu story, and like um, there was one with Kamehameha and the fish ponds in Kiholo, where Kamehameha didn't share his fish. I think so. Pele erupted over the fish ponds. Um, I think those are more modern stories, and not from the the traditional epics, but it it. I think it lends more to um, modern values. And even like um, the more urban legendy ones of the brandy and the cigarette and the hitchhiking, like that's a more modern one of the Kamehameha era fish pond sharing, ulu sharing. I think this one ref referred to something about offering her and Iaka kalo leaves. I'm not sure if it's not ringing a bell, maybe it's something different. Um, there, there are in the Ka'au though, there are prescribed offerings that um, you give to certain Akua. So um, I know Pele is red fish. Um, that's uh, young pigs. Hiyaka is like kalo, like luau leaves. Um, is that kind of what? the question is referring to. <laughs> yeah, it'd be better <laughs> if we had an actual live audience here. Um, you can only transcribe. Uh, here's another question that's interesting, and this might just also be a more modern story. You said that Pele is lava, not goddess of lava that is separate in a physical form. Uh, to what do you attribute the effort to portray Pele as a woman goddess separate from lava? Like, what, where did that come from, or when did it come up? Not sure when it 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 probably came up. Um, it's probably a traditional thing, and it's it's it can lend to the fact that um, before we had books, before we had a written language, before we had TV, internet, um, it was a way to disseminate. It was a way to disseminate the story to the masses, and so we we gave her uh, we gave all of our akua human personifications. And so you could tell these stories, right? Um, and it could transfer quickly from one generation to the next. Um, but I, over the over time, we've we've forgotten that um, that these human Akua figures are actually elemental figures. So that's what um, Papaku Makovalu is helping us to remember that. To um, so there's that one layer of that human story just to to transmit the info to the masses. And then we have the kahuna of um, Papa, Papa Hulilani, Papa Hulihonua, Papa Hanaomoku, um, bringing back the, that, the knowledge that's encoded into these chants and into these stories. And to remember that all of these, um, these Akua are elemental. Thanks so instead of that. seeing like, uh, like um, Kawila Nui Makehe Kalani, um, like in Western mythology, um, he's Zeus, right? The god with the lightning bolt standing on Mount Olympus. But um, instead of saying Kawila Nui is the god of lightning, we can just say Kawila Nui is lightning. And so that's a whole different image you have in your brain. And then the more you can shift to that, um, the more you can decode all of these chants and stories. Um, yeah, totally. It's a huge shift. Sorry, we have a, we do have a lot of questions now. 
Ronald Fujiyoshi asks, you mentioned Hyena. Can you explain more about Hyena from the one on Hawaii Island all the way is there connection to the Hyena on Kauai? Yes, um, yes there is. So there's actually, I think I counted once in the um, place names of Hawaii book. I don't have the exact number on me, but there's like a half a dozen to a dozen Hyena throughout the islands. And Hyena are, I did this research a few years ago, so it's kind of rusty. I might not be totally 100% correct, but Hyena are places um, where you can either witness the sunrise or the sunset. And there's some Hyena like on Maui where um, like, Pa'ia side maybe where you can see both the sunrise and the sunset. And so there's special places on the island that, that can view the elements like that. And um, Ha'ena is also um, thought of for in Pele Chance as portals where you can um, go into the zone. And we can, you know, like in modern life, like athletes, when they're in the zone, they can play, keep playing ball with a broken arm, broken foot. For us as hula dancers, when we get into that haena zone, we're in the zone where, where we can dance at the crater and our feet don't get burned, um, stuff like that. We can dance um, on the Mary Monarch stage with um, the flu and 100 degree temperature and what law and still dance and then collapse after. But you're, you're in that moment, you're there. So that's kind of what the haena is. Haena, what is Lance? I see a chat. One of the Ili connected to HK West Maui Community Fund. Oh, so timely. And yeah. Okay. Um, sorry, a couple more. Kiala Kane Kikawalua asked, um, well, um, well, glad you know them. I know some Ohana <laughs> take whiskey bottles as well. Okuku. Is that appropriate? Modern thing? What you think? It's 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 appropriate modern as a modern thing. Yes, because as a as a community we have to evolve and so you take there are more let me put it this way there are more appropriate traditional ho'okupu but we do have modern ho'okupu and the 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 thing is to if you're ho'okupuing it with good intentions and it's usually the best you have to offer um go for it I mean, I don't want to. I don't want to bash anyone's traditions, and and there is modern modern ho'okupu, so go for it. Uh, Frank Oliveira, <laughs> how about Kaivi Opele here in Hana? Um, now that there's some socialite that's built a rock wall around the pu'u, Momonokan, Sorry, <laughs> can't convey it quite. Oh no, I didn't hear about that. That would be as offensive as building the TMT on top of Mount <laughs> That's, yeah, that's what I would guess. Wainani Lee, is there Haena in the body? body? Yes, probably. <laughs> yes, to get you into that zone. I think in the chance, um, one of the lines, oh, I can't think of the exact lines, but it talks about the lie, akalai ihaena or something like that. So it probably has something to do with the forehead area. Akalai papalawahi, and then the next line is something about haena. Yes. Amy Chang so is that, asking, oh, that, sorry, go it's ahead. That mental, it's that mental ability to get you into that zone to perform, leaving the physicalness behind until after, until you return to mundane life and everything hurts again. <laughs> um, sorry, so this is from Amy Chang and she's asking, could you re please repeat what element hi'iaka is considered and what is a more appropriate hokuku, maybe a more traditional one for Pele? Hi'iaka is um, that energy that re reforests and revegetates the land after Pele comes. And um, what's interesting is if you start looking at Mo'oku Auhau and birth order, you'll kind of see um, the cycle of a volcanic eruption. So Pele comes first, 
And then Poliopele is the last sibling, right? And so that's the sibling that is needed to restore the land back to its vegetative state. Um, so she can Hi'iaka can either be thought of as the seed, as the first ferns that grow on the lava bed, um, the first ohi'a that grows on the lava bed. And what was the Pele question, part of the question about? Oh, uh, sorry. Um, uh, or traditional. Uh, what is the more appropriate ho'okupu for Pele? Um, in the, in the ka'au, uh, it names red fish is good um, ho'okupu for Pele. And also some ka'au, um, there's like a dozen out there, some ka'au name ohelo um, and uh, ohi'a. Lots of red. Um, but you know, Kolani, back to the brandy question, Kelly Kolani gave red silk and brandy. So, hey, there's no knocking that. <laughs> this is another question from Kiala. Um, are there specific only to do when going um, to Hale Um, There is one um, chant that Pele instructs people to do. It is called, um, darn it, I have a brain foot, but it basically, it's basically like an entrance chant telling you how to approach the crater um, humbly. She doesn't say humble, but like with your eyes lowered, uh, whispering, don't make loud noise, et cetera, et cetera. And um, all of that I think lends to a common sense where you wanna, you wanna be focused on the environment, right? So and you're focused on the elements so you're not distracted in case a big eruption is gonna happen right next to you. Same thing with the forest. If you're in the forest, be quiet, listen to your surroundings. Um, and that just lends to being a more observant. Very practical. Um, yeah. And uh, sorry, so from Ku'uipo Naone, in the stories of Pele, Iaka visits Wailua Iki, where um, when there she meets Kap Kapo. What is their relationship and is she an element? Oh, is a fun one because of um, Kapo in modern times is um, given a bad rep because of her association with death. But what Kapo does is um, through our study, uh, we know Kapo as, um, Kapo is caught in Akua Noho. And she's called upon by Kahuna, uh, Laau, Lapa, Laau, healing Kahuna, that when a person is on the deathbed, they'll call on the Kapo energy to, um, to Noho, to, um, what is the English? To Noho, to sit, stay, sit, stay, inhabit, um, possess is a bad, is kind of what I'm alluding to, is to possess the body. And Kapo's function is to, um, it's like the negative space. It's like that dark space. It's to, it's Kapo's function to see if there's life worth saving or if there's, if that spark of life is not strong enough. And so that person will pass, right? And so you, mm -hmm. and so that's the energy of Kapo. Same thing with um, not only people, but with the land, um, with anything actually. And, um, that's why she gets a bad rep because in, in Western culture, death and darkness is a scary thing, right? But in, in Hawaiian, in the Hawaiian mindset, darkness is necessary, like for gestation, like kumulipo, we're, we're, we're born from the darkness, we're born in the womb in the dark. And so darkness to us is a time for growth, a time for healing. And that's the kapo, um, that's the kapo energy. She um, she's called upon at that moment where you have to decide is it is it okay to revive this person or if it's more humane I guess to just let the person pass. Well, you know so much about this and there's um, a lot of comments. I I'm trying to make sure I didn't miss any questions. Um, but. Thank you so much. Is there anything you want to add to, I mean, just, I feel like we, we could go on all day. Me too. I, this is fun for me. <laughs> oh, wait, one more comment. Sorry, let me check this one. 
Uh, this is from Lonnie Eckert Dodd. Uh, oh, it's my classmate. Oh, wow. another woman from, from Maui. Um, she's interested in learning more about the relationship and correlation between Pele and Kane. There are very specific and prescribed Kana by Vai and access to it, how it's managed, consequences um, for um, consequences for mismanagement, um, and that that is also very interesting. The, the Vai around uh, water, but are there specific protocols to access areas where Pele is active and consequences for Heva? Good question. Well, the consequences is like Kiahialaka, where you build in a lava zone one and your house gets erupted over <laughs> and there's consequent even like the simple ones of not turning your back to the ocean you know we all know as kids if you turn your back to the ocean the waves gonna come wipe you out and so um yeah so each of these kind of i have consequences if you don't follow it and if and if we we learn more about these kind of way and we learn the do's and don'ts of how to behave in the environment we'll all be safer out there. I love that this is so practical and it's not like some, uh, <laughs> it's both very, um, yeah, very wise and practical. It's not Natural it's consequences. Mehana's boogeyman, a cool boogeyman um, statement. I love that statement. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, well, thank you so much. I, oh, um, sorry, one more. <laughs> This is also from Keala. Where can we le learn Kanavai? Obviously from you, but um, other resources. You know, I can plug a commercial that each year um, Papaku Makavalu hosts a workshop in January and February. Um, to get on the mailing list for these workshops, you can um, email Lena Ala at edithkanakoolefoundation.org. Um, and this year is our first year. Um, this month will be our first uh, Zoom webinar style workshops and we're going back to the basics. So if you haven't been to a Papaku Makavala workshop before, um, it's a good time to jump in now because we're starting over from square one. But other than that, if you have like a group, um, a group of people like uh, your school or your workplace wants a presentation, like a private presentation, uh, you can email Lena Ala and um, she can help you set that up too. Wonderful question. And, um, it would be a good ending question, but we do have one more from Ulu Kashman. Can you describe Hi, the Can you describe the difference between Kapo Lakinao and Hyena? I probably um, said that wrong. Kapo Ulu Lakinao okay. and Hyena. Yes. Okay. Oh uh, well, Kapo Lakinao is um, an Akua, so she's an element or an energy. And Haena is um, more is literally or physically a place, but it's also a state of being. Olo, you can email Olo. You just call me. <laughs> Haena is not afforded a Kua status, whereas Kapo is. <laughs> and and if you want to continue some of these. Uh, you should check out the um, the what the HK West Maui Zoom site because there is a lot of comments and I didn't read all the comments that oh, I take all night, but they're um, they're very complimentary. So thank you, thank you, thank you for doing this, and well, you will. I'm sure we'll have more adventures together, you, me, and Lance. Hey, thank you, Lance. <laughs> have a good night. You too.